Okay, let's talk about inflation. Inflation is a big part of all of our lives. We are all impacted by uh, inflation, and that's because inflation is prices rising uh, and or price deflation is prices falling. So we're all impacted by the change in prices. Remember I told you that work was uh, a, a different way to look at money, and so inflation would be if I'm working for two hours to buy my shoes, inflation would say now I have to work two and a half hours or three hours to buy those same amount of shoes, which means I'm putting more effort in, which means my dollar, my money is losing purchasing power. And if I'm losing purchasing power, that's bad because now I have to work harder to get the same amount of stuff, so my life is tougher. So we don't like high inflation, but we also don't like deflation. Deflation is where prices are escalating downwards. And so as we saw in the housing crisis, once the prices start going downwards and we feel that the prices will continue to go downwards, nobody buys, and we see escalating or falling prices uh, can run quite quite a ways and uh, cause all kinds of problems. So we really like inflation about 2% on the rise. We like a little bit of inflation, but not too much. Earlier in my life, way back when I was younger, uh, inflation was here in the United States as high as 18%, which means a dollar purchased today was $1.18 uh, next year, which is quite high for inflation, but inflation can get higher. Uh, so let's uh, talk a little bit about um, what inflation is. Prices increase uh, in goods and services. That's inflation. Deflation is the opposite. Price decrease in goods and services. Uh, so the same thing uh, means uh, for more money means a loss in purchasing power. Everyone's worse off. This also impacts interest rates. Interest rates is, is uh, part of inflation. Now, why would that be? Well, if you were going to lend money for a year and you knew at the end of the year things would be 18% more expensive, what's the minimum amount that you would lend money for? Well, at least 18% because you don't want to lose your purchasing power. So if inflation's 18%, the minimum interest rate would be 18%, which of course it was at the time, which is unbelievably high. Who's going to take out a mortgage at 18%? Well, surprise, surprise, I saw a lot of people taking out mortgages at 18% in my life. Uh, currently not anywhere close to that now, but we have seen it in our life. Um, beyond that, can this be a big problem? Yes, absolutely. Here is an example. Uh, Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe in uh, April on October 9th, uh, 2008, its inflation rate hit 231 million percent. That is not a typo. It is 231 million percent. So what costs a dollar today? Next year will cost 231 million dollars. And you think that's crazy. It's not crazy. It's true. And the reason it's true is because what they did was print money and pay all their bills. So money flooded into the system. So everybody was flush with cash. And the more money you put into the system, uh, the more people are willing to pay for the same amount of goods. And so if everybody has lots of money, prices just go up and money becomes less valuable. So we don't want to just flood any place with money because the, it, the result of it, of course, is inflation. And uh, so... A, lo a loaf of bread, uh, which cost five Zim uh, Zim 500 Zimbabwe dollars at the beginning of August, by October 9th cost between $7,000 and $10,000 if you could find it. So you are spending a uh, million dollars for three eggs as it is here. Actually, this is a hundred billion Zimbabwe dollars for three eggs in the picture. Uh, so, And this is true. So inflation can definitely uh, take the value of your currency, of your work, and get rid of it. So in that case, of course, what you want to do is not have any currency. So the minute anybody pays you anything in currency, you immediately buy something of tangible wealth. So you would put your money into gold or you put your money into hard goods. Uh, you know, it could be eggs or bread, but it could be other things too. And of course, your salary you want to raise every day. And so it's just a crazy economic situation uh, and one that can't last. But inflation is very important. Uh, there's a couple of things uh, it, with regard to inflation. Is um, We want to talk about uh, interest rates and inflation, and there's two parts to an interest rate. There's the nominal interest rate, which we've talked about the whole class. So the nominal rate of interest is 6% here, 5% there. That's the nominal rate. But it can be broken down into two pieces. As I said earlier, if you knew next year prices were going to be 18% higher, what's the minimum level of uh, return you would want? 18% because you want to be able to buy the same goods and services this year as you did last year and so therefore if you're going to loan out your cash you want at least 18% on your money. So that's one thing. 
The second thing is, I, I'm loaning out my money. I want, I want some return for that. I'm not just going to let you have my money for nothing. So I want some return on my uh, purchasing power. So I want to get buy at least as much stuff as I could last year. Plus, I want a little bit more because I lent the money to you. So the nominal rate has two parts to it. The first part is the inflation component, the expected inflation over the next term, or however long the loan is. Uh, and the second part of it is the actual real rate of return. So you can see in the slide here, the, the uh, real rate of interest is the change in purchasing power. The nominal rate of interest is what we quote, what we talk about, and so on. And the ex ante, ex ante is the before uh, rate of interest. The uh, rate of interest uh, before anything happens is the nominal rate of interest includes the desired real rate of return plus expected inflation plus expected inflation. So if I was going to, uh, if I thought expected inflation was 18% and I wanted to make a real rate of return of 2%, the minimum I would loan my money out is at 20%. That way I would have 2% more real return after I got uh, broke even with the price of goods and services going up. Uh, a guy named Irving Fisher, if we go to the Fisher effect, uh, define the relationship in mathematical terms is 1 plus r, which is the um, nominal rate, and he uses 1 here so the math works out, right? So 1 plus a nominal rate of 20% would equal 1 plus small r, which is the real rate, the 2% in my example, plus h, which is expected inflation, which is the 18%. So 1 plus 20% would equal 1 plus 2% plus 1 plus um, 18%. So that would be an approximation of uh, the in the actual rate of interest that you would quote, which is nominal, is 18% inflation and 2% real rate. So you can kind of back into inflation this way. If you know what the nominal rate is and what you think people are earning on their money, you can see what their inflation expectations are, which is another way of judging the economy. So um, if we look at the uh, example here in the next uh, slide, if we require a real rate of return uh, of 10%, and we expect inflation to be 18%. What is the nominal rate? Uh, we do 1.1 um, times 1.08, which is 1.88, which gives us 18.8%. Uh, the approximation is 10 uh, percent plus 8% equals 18%. So you could do it with uh, just guessing at the, the two numbers, or you can multiply them out and get 18.8%. Uh, either one is an approximation because we really don't know what inflation will be going forward. Uh, but the important thing here is to have an idea that interest rates break into two components. The return you're going to get, the increase in purchasing power you're going to get, plus the uh, ability to offset the increase in inflation that you expect over the time period. So let's take one more example. Which would you choose? Which would you choose as an employee? A 6% raise when inflation is 4% or a 3% raise when inflation is 0 So you have to think about this, right? A 6% raise with 4%, what is your actual increase in purchasing power. So the raise is 6, inflation is 4. Your increase in purchasing power is 2%. You can buy 2% more goods and services this year than you could last year. The 3% raise with inflation is 0, is you can buy 3% more goods and services than you could last year, because the 3% is 100% real return because inflation is 0. So in this case, you not you don't want the 6% raise, you want the 3% raise, which is counterintuitive to most people. Now that you know this, now don't be the boss that's out there giving everybody a 7% raise when inflation is 6% and saying, oh, I gave you a huge 7% raise, because you didn't, you gave them a 1% real return raise, and 6% was eaten away by inflation. Whereas if you'd uh, given them, if inflation was 3% and you'd given them a 5% raise, that would be a 2% increase in real rates of return. So you can turn this uh, information into something that will help you um, uh, think about your increases in pay over time or the ones when you're uh, running a company uh, that you pay your people. And interest rates have two components, inflation and real returns. Keep them separate and uh, you'll make better decisions about inflation. So inflation takes our interest rate bond um, segment to uh, fruition. The next thing we're going to move into is debt and the other side is equity. Time to talk about stocks.